Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so um, my my talk is about uh, the work uh, I have been doing uh, in about almost two years that brings uh, OpenStack to FreeBSD. And today I'm going to share some experience and the challenges we've met and how we uh, overcome uh, via some workaround or some formal solutions and the future work about the project. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, let me introduce myself a bit. My name is Zixin Zhang. You can call me Jasper or Jasper, either will work. And I'm a software developer from SUSE and currently working on an open source project called Harvester HCI, and which is uh, relevant to uh, Kubernetes stuff, but that's not today's topic. So I'll just get over it. Okay, so on uh, today's agenda, I will introduce about the project, uh, the project origin, and uh, bring some uh, background about, about uh, OpenStack uh, to make sure everybody uh, are on the same page. And I will uh, briefly talk about the current status of the, of the OpenStack on FreeBSD project and the challenges we have met. I have listed some challenges in the slide. And finally, uh, we will we'll come to the roadmap of the project. And finally, the conclusion. OK, so, um, so the project, uh, OpenStack on FreeBSD. And back in 2022, and I think it's January, and Li Wen uh, reached out to me, and uh, he said, uh, there's a project called Cherry, and there are going to be a bunch of uh, Morello evaluation board that uh, they think uh, they um, better to have a mechanism or a platform to manage those boards because they're going to uh, iteratively uh, doing uh, the develop development, software development on those boards and the operating system will be installed and scrubbed and installed and scrubbed again and again. So uh, better to have a platform or a system to manage those boards. And OpenStack pops up. They want to use OpenStack uh, to manage those boards. But, um, but at that time, OpenStack uh, could not be running on FreeBSD host. Uh, FreeBSD is only only certified uh, guest OS, but not uh, OpenStack component cannot run in on FreeBSD host. So, so I need to fill the gap to make OpenStack components like Keystone, uh, Neutron, and Nova to run on FreeBSD host. So it is. Uh, the project started by Li Wen and I, and uh, the initial target is to port uh, the essential one, which is ironic. Ironic is focusing on bare metal provisioning, so that fits our needs to manage those monorail evalu evaluation boards. And but uh, but there are some reasons that uh, the the target just pivot to. Uh, they want to run VMs on Morel boards, but not uh, manage them directly. So uh, after uh, a couple of months, we changed our target to, uh, to port Nova first instead of Ironic. OK, so um, I will briefly uh, introduce uh, uh, the OpenStack. What is OpenStack? And it's basically a cloud infrastructure that can uh, manage virtual machines, containers, and bare metals. Um, and they are consist consists of a stack of open source software components. So as you can see, this is the big picture of the OpenStack big tent. There are plenty of components that are 
still not listed on this graph. These are only the um, essential ones. Um, I, I'm not going to uh, talk about them each, just to uh, let you get a sense of it. Yeah, so the first one, when we talk about OpenStack, the first one will be Keystone. Keystone is the identity service of the OpenStack uh, Big Ten. And what it does is authentication and authorization. And it also supports LDAP as backend. But uh, by default, it uses its own uh, database. And uh, besides authentication and authorization, uh, its main functionality is another main functionality is service discovery. So um, basic, basically, what it does is to um, let the client to know uh, uh, what endpoints they should call to to use that service. And second one is called Glance. Glance, Glance is pretty simple. It's, uh, it's about uh, the image store service. So uh, it serves VM images to, to other components and the users can interact with Glance to upload their VM images. And the other one is placement. When placement tracks cloud resource inventory and usage, and it helps uh, the scheduler, Nova scheduler, to decide what compute host to choose to uh, to create uh, to run those instances. Okay. Um, this uh, Neutron, Neutron is the networking service, and uh, it consists of several components. First one is API server. Um, every uh, every components in OpenStack are RESTful-based uh, services, so uh, most of them contains an API server. And there are lots of agents in Neutron. First one is Neutron uh, L2 implementation. So uh, there, there will be some uh, like uh, Open vSwitch or Linux Bridge agent. So the L2 agent is to provide the L2 connectivity to the VM instances. And so those VMs have L2 network connectivity. It is L3 agent to provide the routing for those VMs to access the internet or other subnet. So that's the functionality that uh, L3 agent brings. And the third one is the SCP agent. As its name suggests, um, it manages the IP address and uh, issues those IP address to the VMs. And the fourth is metadata agent. This is uh, more about uh, cloud needs stuff. And uh, currently, only L2 agent is, is functioning. Uh, L3 and DSCP and metadata, the control plan is ported, but uh, the actual functionality is disabled because there are, con uh, there are several constraints that uh, we, we discovered uh, in FreeBSD. Uh, I will talk about that later. And uh, the uh, most important thing about Neutron is the ML2 plugins. ML2 stands for Modular Layer 2. So typically, there are two, two kinds of drivers. The first, the first one is the type driver. So there are plenty of type drivers, you know, like uh, Flat, Geneve, GRE. VLAN or VXLAN. Yeah, basically they forms the uh, overlay ne network for the VMs. And the second kind of driver is called mechanism driver. Mechanism driver is the um, the actual implementation that conf uh, that creates do those uh, those overlay network. So. Uh, what we uh, 
So the ch there are several choices like uh, OpenV switch, Linux bridge, uh, OVN, stuff like that. Okay, so on to the next. This is the most important component, uh, which is called Nova. Nova is uh, it's not a it's not a hypervisor. It's a software that manages hypervisor. So uh, it has a it has an API server too, and there is a scheduler that uh, manages the request and uh, to schedule the request uh, to choose because uh, in uh, OpenStack cluster there might be many many compute nodes and scheduler will decide which node to run those VMs and the conductor conductor pre prepare the instance information uh, based on DB entries, so conduct, uh, basically conductor communicates with the database. So uh, Nova Compute is the most important one. It manages the instance. Instance here means VMs. It manages VMs lifecycle uh, through the help of hypervisor on each compute node. So each compute node will run their own Nova Compute program. And you can, you can treat Nova Compute like uh, the manager of hypervisor. And uh, there, is, uh, there is a relatively not important, but it's, it is quite important. Zero proxy, yeah. Nova Zero proxy, it provides the access uh, for users to access to the VM console. Um, over WebSocket. Okay, so uh, Ironic. Ironic is the one we uh, originally planned to port, but uh, this, this is not yet done. And Ironic basically is a bare metal provisioning service in OpenStack Big Tent. And it manages bare metal in contrast to uh, Nova VMs. So there are uh, several deployment models. Ironic can be used uh, outside of OpenStack. It's called standalone mode. And the second deployment model is Keystone plus Ironic. So they can have auth authentication and authorization. And the third usage is the most typical one. Uh, Basically, this, uh, this model treats Ironic as an hypervisor, and VM becomes bare metal servers. So um, in an in a OpenStack cluster, users can create bare metal instances, and the uh, Nova Compute will communicate with Ironic to provision, to provision bare metal servers just like uh, just like VMs. Okay, so on to the next. Um, project status. Um, I've done almost all the porting work on this bench table yeah, machine. So, and we have another POC site, it's called OpenStack One, but it is demolished and uh, we are reconstructing it with more nodes. We are joining two, two more nodes to, to, uh, to form a multi-node cluster because now we only have all in one setup. That means all the control plan nodes and the compute nodes are the same node. Okay, so the current status is we we have we have a documentation that instruct how to install OpenStack from source code and uh, build a source code and install all the dependencies and uh, running each OpenStack 
services directly. So there's no, there's no ports or packages involved. That's our next step. And each component will be run in their own Python virtual environment. So this is kind of uh, primitive work. The status is there are no source code modified in Keystone, Glance, and Placement. But in Neutron and Nova, there are some code patches that need to be applied for them to be successfully running on FreeBSD host. And uh, the configuration are limited, are limited to the following things. Uh, for Neutron, uh, currently we only support flat network plus open vSwitch mechanism driver. So what that means? That means uh, currently there's no, there's no tenant network. So um, if there are two users, there are two OpenStack users, they create two VMs. And those VMs will be created on, attached to the same network. They can pin each, pin each other. So that there's no network isolation. That's what flat network means. And uh, for the ne Nova, the configuration com combination are limited to libvirt plus beehive. We choose libvirt because uh, Nova currently does not support beehive. And uh, the majority of the Nova driver are uh, under the libvirt framework. So, and and liver already support Beehive as backend, so we choose liver to uh, to reduce our work, and uh, we can we can develop more quickly. So the limitation is, as I said, there's no tenant network isolation, and uh, and the Neutron DSCP agent is actually not. It's actually not working because there's no Linux name space. So we we disable the DHCP feature in the network. So we need external DHCP services running to issue IP address to the VMs. And there's no floating IPs too, because we we are using flat network. Flat networks is pure L2 network. There are no, there are no virtual routers there, so and and uh, L3 agent is not running, so there will be no floating IP functionality. Okay, it's demo time. Uh, okay, uh, this is my my home lab. And it is in a nested environment, so the performance is quite crappy. So it takes about five minutes to start up a VM because it, need, it needs to copy the VM images from Glens to Nova and uh, from the base image to uh, to copy to another disk uh, to a, another path to become the VM's disk. So let's look what we have for the flavor. Okay, there are two flavors, and uh, I will use the M1 small because. We are going to run FreeBSD 13.3, I guess. Yeah. And uh, for the network, there's, uh, there's already a provider network. 
And let's check the subnet information about the network. So the segment is 192.168.48/24. This is the network segment in my home lab. So this is the flat network, and the VM I'm going to create will be assigned an IP address in this subnet. And let's check what image, what images do we have? Okay, currently we have three, uh, three images. Now we'll choose FreeBSD 30.3. Okay, so let's create a VM. I'll just use my command history because the command is too long. Okay, this is the one. Yeah, so I, I choose the m1.small flavor and the image is FreeBSD 13.3. And uh, the VM has one NIC and it will be attached to the 92 is this one. It will be attached to the provider one network. And we can we can ignore this. Also the key. And uh shoot. So ideally it will take about five minutes to to spin up the VM. But that's not the case in the bare metal machine because this is uh, inside a VM, so the performance is pretty ugly. So, so let's get back to the slide, and after five minutes, we can check the VM's status. Yeah, as you can see, it is in the building status. Okay, so let me introduce the GitHub organization of this project. So the most important part, the step-by-step -step build and installation guide can be found at this repository, docs repository. And I encourage you guys, if you are interested in OpenStack, you can try the steps listed in the guide. And if there are any issues you've, you've found, you can help us and uh, create issue in the admin repository. As I mentioned before, there are some code patches that need to be applied. They are all uh, recorded in these two repository under the OpenStack on FreeBSD organization. And for the FreeBSD ports collection for the OpenStack, there are already some, some components that are made into ports. And thanks to Chuck, he uh, transferred his work to the OpenStack on FreeBSD organization. So we already have some of the OpenStack component ports out there. And uh, you can try them. And for the custom solutions, because there are, there are many limitations, so we have to use some custom solutions to make our cluster work as, as expected. And those solutions are, first one is called SoCAM Manager, and the other one is Nova Console. SoCAM Manager is a, uh, is a service that help, help us to access to the VM's console. And Nova console is a handy tool to let us access uh, via web socket to the VM console on the terminal. Let's get back to the, to the our environment to check 
whether the VM is ready. Oh no, it's still building. Okay, let's get back to the slide again. So on to the next, um, I will I will talk about some challenges with Matt uh, during the the work of OpenStack on FreeBSD project. The first one is computing. So this is the graph that I extract from the uh, previous big picture. So this is the Novas architecture and the uh, red line, red box. There is a component called virtualization driver. Nova has a virtualization driver that, that are well defined and uh, they are per compute no configuration. What that means, uh, basically, if your cluster consists of multiple nodes, you you are allowed to uh, run different types of hypervisors. For example, if you have two compute nodes, first one you can use Linux and use KVM as hypervisor, and the second compute node, you can run FreeBSD and uh, Beehive, and uh, you can make them work together by configure different virtualization drivers on these two nodes. So currently supported drivers are Lipper driver and a fake driver. Fake driver is just a fake one. You can use it to de develop your own driver. And third one is ironic driver. I introduced ironic and in the third deployment model, it can be used uh, with Nova and in that circumstances, Nova has to configure the virtual driver to use uh, the ironic driver. And there are some other drivers too. So uh, our approach is to leverage liver driver, but liver only uh, for liver Beehive support, it only implement a limited set of functions. So um, there are some functionality are missing. And uh, we have to create a new type called Beehive because in the liver driver, liver support uh, various backend like KVM or uh, pure QEMU. And in our case, we have to use Beehive. So, but there's no, uh, there's no Beehive type. So we need to create a new Beehive type liver driver. So uh, with, with that, we can, we can create Beehive VM with Nova Compute. Okay. I think five minutes five minutes passed. You can check again. Okay, it is active, and uh, the IP address assigned is two hundred one. We can access the VM console. OpenStack console URL show serial the VM name, and you will get the WebSocket URL for you to access the VM console. Just need to copy that. And uh, this is my MacBook, and I can Nova console URL. And I need to change the IP address to the to the OpenStack endpoint. Okay, so we are in the VM console now. Log into the VM.
is 13.3. And uh, as you can see, the IP address is 198. And uh, the IP address assigned by Neutron is 201. So there's clearly a mismatch. So we have to update the IP address to, to be the same as the, the one Neutron assigned. Because if the IP address mismatch, there's an there's a open flow rule installed in the open V switch, and uh, it will check the source IP. If the IP address doesn't match, it will silently drop those packets. As you can see, we cannot ping outside because those packets are just dropped by the open V switch. So I need to update the IP address. Dnet. Oops. Update to 201. And uh, add the default route. Also, the name server. And now we can ping 3bsd.org. Yay. OK. So let's get back to the slide. So um, on to the next. The networking challenges. So uh, as I introduced, there are many, many agents out there. For L2 agents uh, in FreeBSD, there are clearly no Linux bridge and IP tables. But Neutron L2 agents will use those tools to, to form a L2 network. So this is clear, clearly a challenge. And for L3 agents, they also use IP table to, to uh, act as a virtual router and provide floating IP functionalities. So that is a problem too. And for DSCP agent, uh, on, in Linux world, uh, Neutron DSCP agent will, will run DNS mask in Linux network namespace and uh, attach, attach it to the bridge via VETH pairs. And uh, Linux network namespace and VETH pairs are missing in FreeBSD, but there are, and there's still, there are equivalents, but the source code is hard coded, so we have to update them. So currently, we just disable the DHCP agent to to make it work. And the current choice of ML2 drivers for FreeBSD is for type drivers, we choose the flat network, so we don't, we don't bother to, to worry about uh, the v VLAN or VXLAN stuff. And for mechanism driver, we choose open vSwitch because there's no, currently no Neutron FreeBSD bridge bridge agent. There's only a uh, Neutron Linux bridge agent. So we, we choose open vSwitch because there's already open vSwitch ports in, uh, in FreeBSD. So we can just leverage open vSwitch to, to provide the network connectivity. So for the graph, uh, on the left hand side is in the Linux world, with the VLAN and the open v switch combination is uh, the, the architecture of two VMs are just like that. The VM has one interface and the, the tab interface is attached to QBR. Which, uh, this is a Linux bridge. 
and uh, there are security groups. Security groups is basically firewalls, firewall rules. And uh, in this world, it is implemented via um, IP tables. And uh, QVB, QVO are uh, VETH pairs. And they are tasked to open vSwitch, um, which is called BR, INT means um, integration, integration bridge. And, and they can configure different VN, VLANs to uh, separate uh, different tenant network. And on the right hand side, uh, this is our current, current uh, current architecture, and we choose flat plus open v switch driver. So this is what it looks like. For uh, the VM, the tap device is directly attached to the BRINT open v switch, and the security groups is implemented by open v switch flow rules, not IP tables, because there are not no there there are no IP tables on FreeBSD, and uh, we we are going to uh, replace that with maybe PF in the future, but currently we we provide uh, security groups functionality via uh, Open vSwitch flow rule. Okay, so uh, currently we use uh, for the data path type we use the NetDev which is a uh, user space because there's no open vSwitch kernel module in FreeBSD. And the uh, combination is considered experimental and the performance, there are performance issues. It's like uh, in, in the VM, I, I want to PKG install some packages. It took about uh, several minutes to, to update the metadata. So, it's not usable, yeah. So this is clearly uh, that we can improve in the future uh, by enable the DPTK or just just ditch the Open vSwitch driver and uh, create a new one for FreeBSD, uh, the native FreeBSD bridge agent. And the other network related challenges is, as I said, uh, there's, a, there's an issue uh, in Neutron DLCP agent. Because uh, there are no Linux network namespace and VETH pairs in FreeBSD. So we simply disable the DLCP feature uh, for the flat network. So we have to uh, set up a DLCP server outside the OpenStack cluster. And because OpenStack Neutron cannot communicate with that DLCP, uh, DLCP server, so the IP address allocated by Neutron and the IP address actually issued to the VMs are not, mis uh, are not matched. So as I said, uh, there will be flow rules installed in the BRNT Open V switch, and uh, it will drop those packets uh, originated from the VM because the source IP does not match the IP address uh, assigned by the uh, neutron. So, uh, as a result, the packets just get dropped silently. So for the workaround is to, as I demoed, I have to um, access to the VM, and uh, the only way to access VM is via console because there's no network connectivity. But the formal solution will be just fix the Neutron DLCP agent with uh, FreeBSD's VNet and the ePair to replace the Linux network namespace and the VETH pair. Those two are hard-coded in the Neutron DLCP agent. But uh, for the workaround, for the workaround, uh, 
leads to another challenge. So the challenge is, uh, previously we used CU, uh, which is called Unix, to access to the VM, VM's console. But that requires uh, users like, like me to, to uh, access to the compute host to use CU. And uh, that is considered impractical and insecure because every user who wants to access to the VM console, they have to first come to the compute, no, compute host, which is just impractical. So we have to, we have to think about a way to, um, to redirect the VM console outside of the compute host. So here is SoCAM Manager. It is a temporary solution to uh, access for, for us to access to the VM consoles. And what it does basically, SoCAM Manager listens on a unit socket and uh, it maintains a table mapping between TCP ports to uh, the neural modem device. And uh, it manages SOCAT processes. The processes look like this. So there are some flags and arguments. And uh, you can see uh, if you connect to this TCP port, it will be redirected to the 21B no modem device. And you can access to the VM's console. And there's another part of this SOCAM manager project. It is the liver hook script. Liver provides a mechanism for, uh, for users to write their own scripts to, uh, to hook the VN, VM's life cycle. And for, for our case, for our case, we take the domain XML as input and uh, we extract the essential information uh, is port and uh, no more than device name. And for these two information, we can uh, maintain the TCP port to normal uh, mappings and uh, create the SOCAP processes. So after that, we can access uh, from uh, Nova serial proxy to the VM console. So here's the graph. Originally on the Linux host, there's no SOCAM manager, so things are simple. User want, users want to access to the VM console, they just uh, connect to the WebSocket and they're redirected by the Nova serial proxy to uh, some, some random port uh, allocated by the Nova compute and they can access to the VM console. But uh, on the FreeBSD host, we, we apply our custom solution, SOCAM Manager, and it will, and when, when the VMs get created, there's a XML describing the VM manifest, and the, the XML will be uh, absorbed by the hook script and hook script will add the port and the normal then mappings. And SOCAT will create the SOCAT processes. So uh, the SOCAT process will listen on this port allocated by Nova and uh, redirect the incoming request to the normal then device. So users can still use the Nova serial proxy to access to the VM console. Okay, so on to the next, the privilege separation challenges. So as we know, there, there's a thing called principle of least privilege. And we want to run everything with reduce or no privilege as possible. And only 
escalate when absolutely required. And in OpenStack world, operate, uh, almost every operation will be translated into commands that needs to be executed on the operating system. So there must be some privilege issues that we have to concern. And OpenStack has some solution about this. So the first generation is just use the sudo. And uh, sudo has some characteristics. It is one shot and it's all or nothing. So we use sudo command to execute some command with privilege. Uh, and the second generation is to use a script to wrap the command with, uh, with the program so-called root wrap. And they accept a configuration to, uh, for admin to describe what command can be run by what users. And it, it compares to the pr primitive sudo. It allows advanced filters and uh, support not just one shot, and also it support daemon mode. But uh, the performance, there are performance penalties, and it does not, it does not allow long-lived or streaming commands. So the mainstream uh, solution is for OpenStack is to use the prefab library. And uh, the library leverage Linux capabilities to, uh, for components like Neutron or Nova to uh, when they are going to execute some uh, commands and they can drop the root superpowers but only keeps what, it, what they need. And uh, the model is a two process model. There are unprivileged process and privileged process. So, for example, if, new, uh, if Nova Compute wants to execute the, let's say, uh, Beehive command, and uh, it will firstly start up a privileged separation daemon, and uh, it will connect back to the Nova Compute and the uh, escalated commands will be um, executed in that process. And uh, those two processes share the same fate, so um, it will be ended if the command ended. So clearly there's no Linux capability in uh, FreeBSD. So the workaround is just not use it or fall back to root wrap. But the formal solution is to leverage the equivalence on FreeBSD. And uh, that thing will be, could be the Mac framework. And for Mac framework, the plan is to uh, write a kernel module that supports uh, configure, configuring the policy, and we also will need a client client tool to communicate with the Mac kernel module. And for the for the privilege separation side, we will need another uh, SDK to communicate with the Mac framework. So that is the plan. So the project future work is to, because um, currently we use flat network and the open vSwitch driver. So there are plenty of limitations, like uh, we does not support, we does not um, support tenant network isolation and the floating IP virtual, virtual router, they are, they are all not existed. So the solution is to write our, our own native drivers for Neutron. 
So there will be a Neutron FreeBSD bridge driver. And for Nova, there will be a Beehive driver for the Nova virtualization driver framework. And currently, uh, the OpenStack on FreeBSD project only poured uh, five essential project to FreeBSD. And we plan to port additional OpenStack components to FreeBSD, like uh, the work in progress ironic or the user interface like uh, Horizon. Yeah, we lack of uh, web web based user interface now. We only can communicate with the cluster via the command line interface. And currently, we only support install each OpenStack components uh, from the source code. We plan to wrap up those uh, steps and uh, abuse step and installation steps and the code patches into, into uh, FreeBSD ports. And another issue is uh, currently our work is based on OpenStack Xena, which is X version. It's the 24th release of, of OpenStack. And I believe it is Caracol now. So it's uh, 29th release now. So we need to catch up on newer OpenStack releases because Xena is, is end of life now we have to catch up on new releases. And uh, we need to continuous engage with the, uh, not just FreeBSD community, but also uh, OpenStack community. Because in our vision, we want to uh, contribute our work and make it, uh, make it more uh, generalized and upstream to the OpenStack community. And for the conclusion, yeah, um, we are always uh, bringing Linux first design to FreeBSDs. So just like uh, just like I said, there are some, uh, there are many many implementations that are bound to Linux. So uh, they are, and they are also hard coded. So it cannot it cannot be adapt to FreeBSD just by updating the configuration. We need to modify the source code and we have to think about how to make them uh, pluggable. So, so that, uh, we can install the same software on Linux and FreeBSD by just configure the configuration. And uh, we found that it's a funny point. Uh, sometimes we we uh, when I trace in the code, I found that we can just stick with the Windows path because currently OpenStack component like uh, Nova Compute can be running on Windows servers, and uh, because FreeBSD is not supported, we found that sometimes we just stick to the FreeBSD path like uh, disable A or enable B, and it will work. And uh, because we disable many things, so the use case is very limited. And uh, there, are, uh, there are so many topics or issues that require uh, more uh, expertise. The projects uh, now only have, I think it's three people, and we we all have our own domain knowledge, but we can cover every aspect. And OpenStack is quite is a quite large project, so we might need more people to uh, to help us. Yes, and especially for the privilege separation. The, the implementation of that. And uh, 
there are、um, so many code patches out there, which is very hacky, and we need to make them. We need we need to generalize them, so formalize the changes, and with that we can maybe upstream the upstream the code changes to the OpenStack community. Okay, so is there any questions? Hey. Just the ID. Yeah.、Um, so I mean, obviously this is kind of like manually done. So is there like some type of glue that needs to be done, where maybe like you add the default router to the CRC comp, and then like service routing restart, and then just kind of like fix the gateway for you and all of that?、Uh, do you mean is there is there any way to、uh, automatically automatically assign those information to VMs? Yeah, like update the image and stuff. Because I know like. You could basically、uh, kind of like execute the commands how you did, like one by one. Yeah. Like, I think you know, fix it and then add it. But I know, like normally, you also can like update the RC and add a default router there. Yeah, sure, but、uh, that that will need to prepare those configuration and、uh, maybe stop them into the BN image. Yeah. But. Oh. Okay. So the question is: Is there a way to automatically assign those,、uh, like,、uh, network information to the VMs? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, and the routing table. And so, the issue is because, firstly, there is no. There's no network connectivity, so we cannot use cloud、uh, something like cloud init to automatically configure the network information. And、uh, DHCP, as I said, there's a mismatch issue, so I can't think a way to automatically configure those information. Hey, yes. Thank you. Okay.、Um, so what Liwen said is,、uh, there's a cloud init work, preliminary work that can、uh, help uh, previous DVMs to get those network informations.、Uh, we can add them as、uh, our future work. Yeah. And currently,、uh, by manually updating the network configuration, is just a walk around. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, is there any more questions? Okay. I think that's good. Thank you.